Well, in the land of the free and endless sunshine, Australia is once again promoting hydrogen as the answer to stop these EVs. It's the most common element found in the universe, accounting for up to 75% of the entire mass of the universe. So where is it all? And why is there virtually none on the entire planet? There are two profound reasons you might not know about, and now it's nothing to do with being an explosive. That's just one of plenty of other reasons that make it less than ideal. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, Australia is said to be the land of sea, sun and surf, so it makes total sense to install solar PV in massive quantities. In fact, they could probably have enough solar generated electricity going to waste that you could overlook the inefficiencies in turning water into a fuel in a form that you can use in an EV. See, green hydrogen is produced by electrolysis using uh, renewably generated electricity. It's by far the greenest method. Blue and grey might also use electrolysis, but not necessarily. It can use fossil fuels uh, where, the carbon where the carbon dioxide produced is supposed to be stored. Yeah, carbon capture. I should say suppose because carbon capture is still theoretical. More importantly, hugely expensive. They say they will, but you know, black hydrogen uh, just comes from burning coal. Enough said. So we have to make it. But if it's the most common element in the universe, why do we have to make it? Where is it all? So we reach the first problem. It is a very, very, very light element. In fact, the lightest in the universe. And when you release it, it just heads upwards and just keeps going. Poof, gone. Yeah, oh, nothing left, and not even poof, uh, it's just gone. And that's why airships use it. They trap it in a massive plastic bag, and the whole thing sets off upwards, lifting the airship, passengers, cargo, etc. So reason number one why there's none on Earth, let it loose, gone in a flash. Yeah. Oh, in actual fact, there's no flash. Did you know hydrogen burns with a totally colourless flame? You can't see it, totally invisible. You cannot see a hydrogen fire. That's why if you read the safety instructions for the handling of hydrogen, it states, if you have a leak, just assume it's on fire. <laughs> I kid you not, look it up. It's far worse than ethanol that burns almost invisible, but a slightly blue tinge to it that is often not visible in daylight. It's amazingly difficult to handle. Leaks are invisible whether they're burning or not. Oil spills, far easier to see. But it's still one of the most common elements on Earth, so why can't we find any? Well, the problem comes because hydrogen is an amazingly sociable chap that really does not like being alone. It yearns for company and will join with just about anyone it meets. If it doesn't meet anyone else, it forms a bond with itself. In fact, that's what hydrogen means. A gene bit of it is Greek for joining, forming bonds. Hydro, obviously, is water, so it forms water bonds. Hydrogen itself is very, very, very rare. It's almost always H2. That's two hydrogen atoms bonded together. Okay? So stop all those YouTube claims claiming to run a car on H2. H2 is just hydrogen, just two of them bonded together, which they do on their own. It doesn't like to initiate contact, but if the other partner has even a spark of electricity, it's straight in there. And oxygen is by far its favoured partner. H2O. <laughs> so there's an absolute mass of hydrogen on Earth, but it is all already spoken for. It is in fact one of the most reactive elements we have. Put it near anyone else, particularly oxygen, it can't help itself. It just instantly forms a union. Look through almost all the compounds on Earth, you find hydrogen right in there, especially if it's organic living compounds. So you've got your beloved water, couldn't live without it. Necessary for all life on Earth. Then pretty much everything else that's bad or not so good for us. Alcohol, not sure which that one is. Sugar, hydrogen peroxide, hydrocarbons, dreaded fossil fuel. Hydro is in all of them. It's absolutely everywhere, Jim, but just not as we know it. And this is the second main problem. Not only does it form unions really easily, but it hates breaking up. 
hangs on like grim death for as long as possible. So this is the second problem in getting hydrogen. It is already locked into other compounds and requires huge amounts of energy to break that bond and break it free. So let's have a look at water. That's a common uh, simple bond. Two atoms of hydrogen bonded together with one of oxygen, H2O, H2H10. It requires energy to break that bond and release it from its life in a perfect partnership. If we discount burning fossil fuels to, to break it apart, that's just pl plain lunacy. Why add the complication? We already burn it, burn fossil fuels in ice. So what's the point in burning it to produce another fuel, which we then have to burn, which makes it less... It you know what I mean. We just come round. Anyway, uh, we come back, of course, to the Australian sunshine and solar PV panels. Everybody tells us they produce so much electricity, there are times we can't use it all. And that's actually true. It's the cleanest possible energy. It's no waste products. Sun just produces energy full stop. Electricity. Plug in on a sunny day. No other processes, you, uh, no other processes needed. You can immediately store about 95% in your battery in your EV from where it can be immediately released to make your EV move. 5% is inefficiency in charging the battery. It's about as simple as you can get, which is not the case with hydrogen. So you need to put energy in to break those bonds. So no longer simple sunshine producing a fuel, we now need that electricity produced from solar panels to make another fuel. And when we make hydrogen, the byproduct or waste is oxygen, and that has a financial value. So things like hospitals, industry, they've got a huge appetite for it. So, of course, that value can be deducted from any production costs. So, someone talks about having an electrolysis machine making hydrogen as you drive along. <laughs> no, don't be stupid. If the electrolysis machine was 100% efficient at making it, which it isn't, and if the engine, fuel cell or whatever it is was also 100% at using it, the net energy is zero. <laughs> You'd just use it all making it and there'd be nothing left, no spare energy to move the car. So in reality, electrolysis is only about 70 or 80 percent efficient. So you'd actually use more energy trying to make hydrogen to run your engine than you got out of it. You've got to scratch that idea. Perpetual motion does not exist. So we need to make it somewhere and use some of the free electricity that our solar panels produce. Why do I say free in that way? Well, if you use it to make hydrogen, it will cost you money to store it and transport it to your customers, who in turn will need expensive storage equipment and usage equipment uh, for actually using it. It's all just added expense. On the other hand, when you take the EV coming out of your P, uh, electricity coming out of your PV panels, you can just plug it into the grid or into an EV charger. Job done. There's no middleman in between. And there's a multitude of buyers waiting for it. Don't need to store it. Just plug it into the grid. Nor do you need any expensive equipment to get it out of the grid. We've all of us got electricity everywhere. Just one three pin plug. The grid, all the companies, all EV chargers, all houses, the list of people who want your electricity is endless. Why complicate things? Just connect your PV panels straight to your customer. But you're stubborn and you really see a future in hydrogen vehicles. So let's have a look at storing. And there's no simple answer. And that comes from a company actually making hydrogen and storing it. Their conclusion is, having produced it, you have to store it until it's needed. And the cheapest way of doing this is by compressing it, like a diver's compressed air scuba tank. But it is actually, we've already said, the lightest element in the universe. So even when you compress it, it has an amazingly low energy density. You need massive, massive tanks in your car to be able to drive it on compressed hydrogen. So we need it actually more condensed, more power. But this company states ensuring you have the production of green hydrogen close enough to the demand point and being able to regulate su supply is, is the, probably the biggest challenge. So says Dr. Liam Wagner. He's an associate professor at Curtin University in Adelaide, Australia. So for automotive use, 
uh, it needs to be compressed and it needs to be compressed down and liquefied we need to go very much further than just compressing it we need to go right down to liquefy it so if we chill it right the way down it's about 200 minus 250 centigrade celsius which it was well, quite chilly and you can press it and force it into a high pressure storage vessel it suddenly becomes very much more interesting it's a liquid but that now it stores a huge amount of energy it's massive but doing that chilling it down to minus 253 and uh, storing it can take up to about 30 percent energy of the equivalent that you're storing that's expensive but it's also uh, now much more usable it's also now a huge bomb even bigger massive volume of a highly flammable liquid trying to get back to its natural state gas but there are two final flies in the ointment first it takes energy to convert it from a liquid back in uh, back into electricity around half of the energy that's stored in the gas gas is needed from an external source to produce that electricity so suddenly our free excess electricity coming out of pv panels is dwindling away rapidly if we start with a fixed amount of energy it uses about 20 percent of that to make hydrogen it then uses a, 20, a further 20 to 30 percent of that to chill it down compress it and store it then when you want to use it it'll use another 50 percent of what's left uh, to produce the final electricity that you will use in your ev or wherever you want it well without actually putting a final figure on it you get get nothing it's a tiny fraction of what you start with so once again why sell just the little that is left when people are queuing up to buy the original electricity itself and the answer of course is money if you can sell the stored hydrogen for 10 or 20 times the price of electricity all of a sudden it makes sense to someone well to the producer it does certainly doesn't to the end user because that will cost 10 to 20 times as much as running your car on electricity if you had a battery and a few billion times as much as if you buy a few PV panels of your own and actually produce your own electricity for free. So for a long list of reasons why we won't burn it uh, in ice, we really only need to state one. Your car will never be allowed to burn it. <laughs> yeah, you can run a car on hydrogen. People do it. And they claim that the only pollution it produces is water. That's not true. Because the air that it burns in the cylinders is 78% nitrogen, 28% oxygen. That's, uh, is that right? Anyway, whatever it is, uh, the waste products are indeed water, but also nitrogen oxides. And these gases are being hunted down around the world and banned as extremely dangerous to the planet even more so than CO2. So the main reason hydrogen will not take over is that every single car in the world will need to be replaced and the replacement makes EVs look decidedly cheap. I'm Dave. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And thank you very much to all our Patreon members. Without you, the channel would not be doing what it's doing at the moment. I'm Dave.